How are we doing? I just love it. I just absolutely love it. Look at that there. Look at all them spots free. That's what happens now when I'm opening on a scooter. It's uh, it's fantastic, especially when you can't get parked anywhere in Tenerife because everybody's back and the holiday makers are back. How are we doing? First of all, let's get rid of the clickbait. Uh, no, I didn't get the job. No, I didn't. But it's fine. It's absolutely fine. There's a couple of things, for those of you who may not be aware, uh, I applied for a position at, um, at Boom Trikes to see if I could be like a part-time driver to be cover sick, cover holiday, etc. Had a fantastic chat with Maria and with uh, Ian, really, really nice people, and uh, positive chat about a week and a half ago. They were actually looking for somebody full-time, but I couldn't offer them full-time. So um, I went there with my idea of saying, well, I'll tell you what, I could do your holidays and stuff. And it, you know, they came across, they had to think about it and stuff. The thing about it is, is, there's a couple of things about this. Number one, when I actually applied for it in the last vlog, I wondered whether I should be telling you guys about that because um, you set yourself up for a big fall more than anything. But I actually purposely decided to tell you about that because whether I'd get it or whether I would not get it is irrelevant really what what's, was relevant about that is the fact of the proactiveness of stuff that I do I can't expect a successful business like boom trikes who's got a business model and a successful one and they've gone out with the business model to up somebody full-time all I was trying to do I can't expect them to go drop up a hat and go yeah that's the thing for me to do uh, to take me on so I was absolutely fine under the idea that whether I was going to get it or not I, th I thought to myself there's a 50 50 chance on it so if it's a 50 50 chance I thought well why not give it a go in this instance it didn't work out but on the next one it might do and then it fits me and it fits them and then it works so that was the reason why I wanted to mention it to people not because of like hey I'm gonna get it and then oh no and then forget about it if I didn't get it and mention, mention to everybody I didn't get it it's okay not to get it because as I said to you before I was asking them to change their business model to fit with me not um, the other way around. I sent them a message the other day just thanking them for the time and I got a lovely message back off Maria and uh, you never know in the future something might come of it but we just have to uh, we just move on to the next thing and see what goes on next. So that's pretty much what's happened in the last week. Um, works going really well with the comparing which I definitely don't want to give up. I'm really enjoying that so I'm quite happy to uh, you know keep that going and then look for other avenues because it's still a 20 hour week. I've picked up two more gigs through the week, through the daytime. We did one yesterday at the Mellow Gecko, which you might have seen a vlog from the main channel. I believe uh, Daniel, which is called Crackmaster, he did a live from there as well. So again, it's a small business that, you know, that needs support because these are hardworking people from Tenerife who actually need it. Not like down here on this street. Do you know where we are? I bet you do. So what's been happening? Loving the scooter. You saw there where I parked it. I've just come into town and um, and if I'd have come in the car, it took me 50 minutes to get here. A journey it's just took me 20 because there is no traffic on us with a scooter. It's absolutely brilliant. You just fly through. And getting off the golf is an absolute nightmare sometimes. Today was a nightmare, but on the scooter, you just literally, it was a, it was a breeze. So I absolutely love it. I love the fact I can just park it anywhere. Normally you spend 20 minutes looking for a parking spot. And it's my little indulgence, you know. Since I was a kid, I had my first scooter I had was 16 or 17. And I've loved them. And I've had a motorbike in my life. And now I'm back on a scooter, more for the safety aspect or anything else. But I love it. It's it's daytime. It's brilliant. Nighttime, a little bit different. Because nighttime, I left work the other day. It was one o'clock in the morning, and uh, the temperature was 19 degrees, freezing. <laughs> I know it's weird because 19 degrees over here, you get condensate. The seat was soaking wet. The uh, the control panel was soaking wet. Because over here, 19 degrees, it's cold. It's bizarre. I've got a hoodie, I've got gloves, I've got Darren John's neck shawl which I'm going to uh, pull out of the bag and just start using that because it was freezing on my neck as well. And it was, uh, I've got to get used to that because it's going to drop to the giddy, the giddy lows of 13 degrees. So I've got to get used to that, the giddy lows of 13 degrees. It's like winter is definitely coming and the temperature has definitely, definitely changed. This morning it was freezing. When we got up and I got on the bike, I went and joined Shelly this morning as she took the dog, uh, took Rolo to the dog park. And uh, I'm up on the bike in a t-shirt and it's nine o'clock in the morning. I went up there to surprise her. I'll tell you what, it was nippy going up. It's beautiful now. So we've come to that part of the time of Tenerife that people love. Cool in the morning, cool in the evenings, but uh, through the day, still absolutely glorious. And today now it's almost like 26 degrees. And temperature wise, pretty, pretty decent. What I wanted to talk about today 
is actually something a little bit different. It's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit strange, really. It's something that I've actually come to realise. One of the things is very, very simple. Financial, but my financial position is I am what's called property rich, cash poor. The reason being is becoming from a divorce. My kids still live in the house in the UK. I've left out position, left, made sure that they're all sorted so they've got somewhere to live, which means in essence I start over again. So property rich, cash poor. The funny thing about it is this morning, I've been at the shop this morning and I went and bought some metal paint. And the reason why I bought some metal paint is because we've got in our house, as a gift off my sister, we got given some garden furniture and it's sturdy garden furniture, although it's old. My sister's been here for over 20 years. The garden furniture is absolutely glorious, really. It's nice. With the cushions on, it looks fantastic. But they're looking a bit rusted. Now, one thing that people may not know when you live over here, garden furniture costs the earth. It's an absolute fortune because it's outdoor living, isn't it? So, you know, and the simplest of garden furniture, you're looking around about five, 600 quid. Property rich, cash poor, can't do it. So what I've done is I've bought some metal paint and I've started painting this now. Um, trying to bring it back to life so it's like renovating it bring it back up to what it used to be or something like it and I used to see those things as a chore I really did to me that was just Christ almighty I can't be bothered either get somebody else to do it or just go and buy some new stuff because in its time that's what I could do that's what I was able to do but I can't do that anymore so what I've decided to do was I thought to myself well, rather than think of this as a chore why don't you think of this more as a hobby and take your time over it rather than just rushing to get to the end of it because that's normally what happens you rush to go from A to Z as fast as possible to make sure it's done I thought why don't you just take your time with this enjoy it what you're doing and spend some time with the dog Shelley in the house in the garden and you know actually get used to it. start enjoying the DIY rather than actually seeing it as an horrible chore so that's what I've tried to do today I've spent a couple of hours just in the garden just trying to sort do it I did a table I did a couch just to see what it come up like and to be honest with you they come up pretty well we've got a couple of things in there you can see that the garden furniture was there but we've also been got this hammock and the hammock is I think it's beautiful but again it needs restoration and the thing is years ago when I was the golf pro part of the PGA training remember the clubs were actually made of wood they weren't made of metal I got taught how to restore wood so all of a sudden it's like right let's go back to those days so my first job is now to sort the garden furniture out and the second job after that is to then sort this hammock out and see if i can get this looking as uh, how it should be i think to be honest with you i think it's too far gone but i'm going to give it a go i'm going to see what we can do with it as well so that's pretty much what the job's been done today the trouble we've got next door neighbor's been building they put an extension on the house and they've been doing it since june mr and mrs gorgeous beautiful people Dominico, Gabriella, love them to bits. But they've been doing this, 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 they've got the slowest builds in the world, man. And the noise. The noise that's coming from it is just. It's just ridiculous. It's like, add enough now. So that was the reason why I also said to, uh, to Shelly, I said, right, I'm getting out. I'm coming out for myself. I'm gonna get on the bike, on the scooter, and I come into town. I'm going to do a vlog like this and just get myself out there. I love Spanish music. I like Spanish music. It always makes me feel like I'm on all with Spanish music. It's really good. Really nice. So I thought, that's the reason why I'm coming to town. So it's a bit of me time. Half an hour on the bike, straight into town, have a bit of a laugh, a bit of a giggle, just riding around, feeling a little bit free. But Michael Sheen, Barry Sheen, Barry Sheen. Michael Sheen's the actor. And then uh, have a bit of a wander in a place that's a nice area which I like this area, it's a nice place to wander. And uh, have a chat with you guys. More and more, whether it comes to the job, situation with the boom trikes, whether it comes to the garden furniture, whether it comes to the hammock, it's now trying to start enjoying the journey. And that, weird, that is a word that I never thought I'd say, try and enjoy the journey. The thing for me, I'm doing this job, painting this. We had the music on in the background, the dog's fast asleep on the couch after being in the park. And Shelly said to me, she said, do you know what it is, Rick? She said, I could not be more happier in my life now if I tried. And it just made me stop and think, and I went, could I be happier in my life at this moment in time? And to be honest with you, I don't think so. There's a couple of things, kids-wise, but I don't think so. I think it's pretty damn close.
pretty damn close. I hope you guys are. I hope you're happier in yours, whatever you're getting up to. But I think, on the whole, I think it's happy. I'm pretty decent, pretty happy. All right? I want to show you something. I need to show you something. I've got to go and find it first. It's just around the corner from this area. And I want to tell you something about, uh, about somebody from the channel who watches and what they've told me about it, all right? So give us a second. I'll see you in a minute. Let me explain a little bit more. There's um, there's a man on the chat. There's a man from the channel who I know from Ricky Shelley's channel as well. There's a guy called Neil Davison, and Neil Davison comes over on holiday, and he comes over sometimes on his own, but sometimes he comes with his partner and his daughter. And what they've done is over the years, they've befriended a homeless man called Danny, and Danny comes down here every single evening. With two dogs. Now I promised Neil I'd come down. I've not had a chance to come down yet. Night times, Neil. If you're watching, I've not had a chance to come down night time. But I thought I'd come down and have a look. And if I can't get down here, and some of you guys are on holiday over here at the time, because I, I couldn't be working at night, I struggle to get down here. It's normally here from about half eight till about half ten. That's what I've been told. And he comes down with his two dogs, who are actually impeccably looked after. And uh, he's had a tough time, this Danny. Uh, Neil told me a story, and the story is a believable story. So it's not just a it's not just a bullshit story, you know, it's actually a believable one. And he comes down near the area of Tony Romer's, opposite the H10 Conquistador. And there's the Tony Romer's here. So he's somewhere in this area normally at night time. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to come and have a look for him uh, one night when I'm off and Shelley's got a gig in this area. So I'll just come down, drop Shelly off, park up, and then come for a wander myself and go and look for him. But in the meantime, if any of you guys are down this area, on this strip, opposite the Conquistador, so there's the Conquistador behind me there, in this area, and you look for, see a homeless man with two dogs, do us a favour, go up to him and say hi. Um, his name's Danny, if you want to, by the way, if you feel safe and secure enough to do it, his name's Danny, because the one thing that he loves more than anything else, obviously he needs help financially, etc. But the one thing he loves and he doesn't get from people, he doesn't get, he doesn't get people's time. And people don't give him time. And that's one of the biggest things that I heard that actually struck a chord with me, is that, because we're all here, we're all on our own travel, we're all on our own journey. And you know, he's on his and we're on ours and you're on yours. And if you can just help somebody just by giving somebody time, I think that's gonna be an incredible thing to do. So, Neil, we'll tell him that you sent us, you sent us, I'm going to come down myself and have a look for him um, one night when I'm off. I'm going to come down, most probably, hopefully Saturday, I think, um, and I'll let him know that you sent uh, you sent me down there. Okay, guys, as always, you know what to do. Look out for each other, and I'll uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Okay, cheers.